Hi, this is the fifth video reviewing general relativity in a bottom-up fashion. In this video, we see that a wormhole can be a shortcut between two locations, and also some details of a Morris Thorne wormhole. We then look at how a wormhole can be attached to space-time in different ways, and how it can be used as a time machine. Let's get started. Let's take a quick look at wormholes. Here's flat space-time in X and Y, and we'll mark two locations. The distance between them is seven units. Now, instead of staying in two dimensions, as we usually do, we'll add three voxels in an external dimension as an alternative pathway to connect the two locations. This pathway is called a wormhole, and the two ends are called the mouths of the wormhole. The voxels of the wormhole are stretched, so we only need three of them, and therefore the distance through the wormhole is measured to be only three units. We'll mark the midpoint of the wormhole with purple, and we call that midpoint a throat. The wormhole is a shortcut. Here we have two people that travel at the same speed, the same distance as measured by our sticks. The path through the wormhole is shorter and therefore quicker. Let's look at the type of wormhole described by Morris and Thorne which mathematically is fairly simple. So here, in otherwise flat space, we have a sphere of exotic matter that would turn out to be the mouth of a wormhole. Let's build a ring of sticks around it. The circumference turns out to be 20 units. Next, we move along the radius, one unit of distance. If we now build a second ring, we would expect the circumference to be six less if this were flat space. But, just like for the Schwarzschild space-time, the difference is less. In the second video, we call this excess radius, and we show this as the radial stick being shorter than the sticks along the rings. Now we continue inward, along the radius, and come to the smallest ring, which is the throat of the wormhole. If we continue along the radius, the circumference will increase, but how do we show that? Well, let's zoom out a bit to where we have a second spherical mass, and redraw the throat. As we take another step along the radius, we get to a larger ring, then another step, and an even larger ring. Now, to connect to the throat, we need to get rid of the third dimension, z, so that upward is not part of space-time, but some external dimension in which space-time is embedded. We see that space-time seems to end at the throat, as if space-time has an edge, but it doesn't. Let's lift up the innermost voxels of space, and then we join those innermost parts. And there, we have a wormhole with two mouths and a throat. Note that we cannot do this with deformations within normal space, as we usually do. We have to make use of an external dimension, because we're changing the topology to have a hole. A wormhole could be used to go back in time. First, let's look at how mouths are attached to space-time. Let's put a firecracker at the throat and detectors at the mouths. The light from the firecracker is detected at equal times at the two mouths. But it's also possible that the flashes arrive at different times. How can this happen? Well, it's a bit confusing the way we mix video time with space, so let's get rid of the y-coordinates and use that for time instead. Here the two mouths are attached at the same time, so let's repeat the first case. The flashes appear from the mouths at the same time, after two seconds. The path of the flashes define a light cone, which is symmetric between left and right. But now let's change how the right mouth is attached. We slide it forward in time by one second. Now we get the second case. The internal or proper travel time is the same in both directions, but the flashes appear at different times. If we now show the light cone, we see that it's tilted inside the wormhole. But in flat space, the light cone is not tilted. Now let's shift the mouth even more. 
we let a firecracker go off at time 2 seconds. The flash moves to the right mouth where we add a mirror to reflect it into the wormhole. The flash now travels through the wormhole and arrives at the firecracker at time 0 before it went off. In other words, we have a time machine. Time machines are a can of worms. Just ask your grandpa. In the next video, we look at expanding space, cosmic horizons, multiverses, and gravitational waves. I'll see you there. For more videos, go to physicsisnotweird.com. And I'm Aiden Bernander.